few years before there had been quite much writing in the newspapers about the group of foreigners who come here to dig for Lemmingainen's temple. And of course when this was quite close to the village where I was living, I read the local newspapers and knew about that part, but really nothing else, really not nothing else. I can't really say I was super impressed in that way by the person or something. I know many people and we spoke the same language also, so we had this kind of little bit direct connection in that way. And it was just nice stories. It was really nice stories. Interesting, positive. Another view on the nat natural world, kind of. Of course, your stories were nice, but I mean, it took many years before I went to visit him in Helsinki. Because more there was this place quite close, 15 kilometers from where I was living, and we could go there with car in 20 minutes for the evening, drink a few cup of tea, and sit and discuss with the people who was there. So I never really seen any digging so much going on there. I came into the story after this whole circus of breaking up these stone pieces in front and having bobcats driving out the stuff and blowing dynamite inside there. I a little bit missed that. Was good, mm -hmm. maybe. So after that, there was many people staying there waiting. How will this go on now? And it was this kind of group from Goa, mm -hmm. mostly. I think he went to Goa to do his studies there, because he anyway had a summer job here, which was really seasonal when he was a guide in Sveabori. Mm -hmm. I think it was just far more nice for him to go mm -hmm. there to India and mm -hmm. make this whole program there. And of course, my parents had been meeting Eeyore because they were from the same generation. Mm -hmm. Or actually, my uncle had lived with, even once I think Eeyore had been visiting the house where I was living at small, before I was born, playing mm -hmm. Mahjong and Backgammon and whatever they played there, and mm -hmm. spending time with these. And he was anyway a well-known character around here. But exactly his school stories, I don't remember. But I think he never went to school. He, had, he was taught at home. I'm not a detailed person in that way. I was going to India already first time 1989, also to Goa, and I met them a couple of times, had a nice talk, I met them in a party, you know, sit down on the mats, drink tea, smoke pipe, have a good talk, mm -hmm. and say, you know, bye bye, you know, when it was time to go. And then I came to Finland, you know, and then the following summer the bust came. And then I saw the headline that, you know, Eeyore Bok and tens of foreigners arrested. Kilos of hashes and extra dangerous LSD, you know, involved. Mm -hmm. And then I went a year later to India, again, second trip to me. And then one day I think maybe it would be nice to come and say hello to Eeyore, you know, that where, where are you staying? And then I went to that particular village in North Goa called Sapora, where Eeyore stayed all his seasons in Goa, and went to his veranda and met him first time. Maybe from his birth, you know, up to 45 or 46, you know. I think during the war time they lived in Helsinki. I think at one point he said that the earliest memory what he had was that his mother was opening a window and pulling him up and showing down to the street. And there was a big hole on the street where Russians or Soviet Union has just dropped bombs, you know, when they were bombing Helsinki during Second World War. So maybe his earliest childhood memory, maybe at the age of four or five, was that hole in the street, you know, after the bombing. And I think Juha is even inside the apartment, same time. Yeah. 
and Juha is sitting there, you know, and then suddenly Juha is hearing some sounds, you know, from the corridor, you know, oh, some screaming, you know, and somebody falling down. And then quickly he jumps up from the floor of the living room, runs in the corridor, and there he see Eeyore Bok, you know, laying on the floor with, I don't remember how many stabs, you know, on his back, you know, with the door open, you know, and the guy who did it ran away. They catch him up, you know, but I, and they put him into prison, and they make trial against him as for murder attempting, but they never had a sentence on him, sentence on him because they made that psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. you know, from him. And the psychiatrist, they find out that this guy is like so out of his head, you know, and he's been like a chronic case that we can't like give a sentence to him. We can only put him inside of the mental hospital or the mental prison and keep him inside as long as we find out that he's okay. And I, maybe he was for five or six years, you know, inside. But maybe in this year's case, because there had been cases already from before, so it all started to mix up, you know, a little bit. It, it started to get so, like, weird, you know. And then all the debts were unpaid, like by end of 99, you know, and then you know, banks and other people, you know, who had some debts, you know, that they were looking money, you know, from me or were raising a court case against the or that he hasn't paid. And what usually happens, you know, that the state confiscates, confiscates, you know, all your property, sells it in an auction and gives the money you know, to those who are demanding it for. And the, and the auction also happened while Eeyore was in India. So he didn't have a lawyer, you know, or anybody, you know, to represent him, you know, his, you know, you know, his rights and his benefits, you know, and all. He just let it go and it went like it did. Of course, he almost have felt very bad, you know, inside of him, but he never spit it out. He never told, hey, look, you know, for the situation I've got here. He never asked help, you know, from anyone. So there is that like a feeling of like being a martyr, you know, that you sacrifice, you know. Mm -hmm. That I don't care, you know, that this is my destiny, you know, mm -hmm. my way of doing things, yeah. So at one point I thought that it's very good thing that these two new assistants from India, because these last two assistants he had from India, they came to Finland to work because of a newspaper announcement that there is a paralyzed person in Finland, look for two personal assistants, that he will salaries provided, you know, and food and place to sleep, you know. And there was two boys, you know, one was like a swimming teacher and another one was an athletic, you know, nice young guys, you know, just over their twenties, you know. First time, you know, out of India, you know. <laughs> but it, it, it didn't go like that, as we all know. That even one of them, you know, who killed Eeyore, you know, at last, yeah. I don't know if Eeyore was like asking him to do it or begging him to do it or did it happen, you know, by why he did it, you know, the Indian guy, yeah. Yeah, it seems, it seemed, it seemed like that he was definitely hard on some people, yeah. But nobody was eyewitnessing it, you know in that way, you know, that he really like tell them to not to fuck off, you know, because if they w if he would have said so, maybe people would have just backed off, you know, and never came back, you know. 
maybe there was something else, you know. I don't know. There are so many, I would say, phases of Eeyore, you know. And of course, you know, when he gets killed and he died and the heritage came and people appeared up whose existence, you know, nobody knew from before. But of course, Eeyore must have known, you know, there is no doubt about that. And the same kind of fanatism has followed, you know, even over Eeyore's death, you know, that some of the people don't want to even see the picture of Eeyore's sister or mother next to Eeyore's face yet. That they just, how you say, do you say, deny, you know, you just deny from that. Fuck it, you know, it can't be true. You know, don't fit to my picture, you know, it's not part of my story, don't exist. And you, so I would call it like a fanatism, you know of today, yeah. So maybe the picture is not so idyllic and ideal as the mythological pictures are shown to us, you know. Maybe Eeyore's part, you know, was different, you know, as it seems, you know. Yeah, the questions, they do remain, yeah. I don't want to like start to even dig. I've seen the pictures, I understand, you know, it can be so, maybe it is, but I don't know, I don't care, you know, because I don't believe, you know, in any ideals, you know, or idyllic, shiny pictures, you know, of, yeah, that he was the first son, you know, and so he don't, he's not allowed, you know, to have a children, you know, because he's not allowed to have a family, because he's supposed to be the king, and the king represents the moon, and never make the children, you know, all that, you know, this kind of principles, you know, that are to be followed, you know, in today's world, you know. Some people took it so personally, you know, that they just throw everything, you know, in for the story and regret later what they have done, you know, what I have said, you know, how my life would be if I wouldn't meet this person ever or never heard of the story, you know, would be a rich and healthy and... <laughs> <laughs> but for some people it seems to be also like a lie, it, it, it's also a source of energy, you know, to some people, that it keeps them going, you know, they need that story, you know, to give them confidence of their being and existence, so they have something to say, you know, and... But I think Eeyore would be very happy to find out that Tommy Granström and this Tuomisalo and all these ship boys are having a ship like this, you know, I think this would fulfill, you know, all his fantasies, yeah because he was a very big friend of these ships, yeah. And many of his tours, you know, that he did around Sveabori were actually made by a ship like this. I remember Eeyore as he was, you know, to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't count, you know, on his royal heritage, you know, mm -hmm. that he has to be so, you know, that if, if he's not, then everything else has to be wrong mm -hmm. or lie, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I never, I never counted on it, you know, I never lived up to, up to it, yeah. But there is no one to blame, yeah, that I find. Not, not the museum, not the office, of course we can say, oh, what the fucking idiots, why they don't do like, you know, I don't blame them, you know, that they are like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault, you know. It's not their, like his fault that he went, you know, and killed the or and It's not the other Finn's fault, you know, that he tried to kill or It's just the circumstances that were driving people into the situation that the only solution was to do what they did. Mm. 
But stories that can be proved later on, they are more easily to be made than stories that we can check all the facts, you know, later. And for example, if we think these two pictures now next to each other, he or on this, and his mother on this side, and you can like see by eyebrows and nose and eyes and chin and cheeks that these two people they are very closely, I don't know if they are so close, but you know, if I would not know them, I would say, yeah, they are related to each other, as an amateur's point of view. Mm -hmm. Brewer Holger Svedlin, yeah. I understand for those, you know, who never did anything with their body in their life, and after such an accident, you know, it's difficult to start to do something that you haven't done before. But I think he or he was a quite like in a very healthy state, you know, of his life because he he lived he lived very healthy life, yeah. And that was maybe one of the things that pissed really clear off also because I think they were also yoga teachers, you know, in Goa for many years, yeah. They always participate in in these yoga exercises. But when 84 came, you know, he or already sat down and stopped all the exercising, only walking and dancing. So people, most of the people followed also these like strange principles, you know, that let's eat only white flour with white rice and put 12, you know, cubics of sugar into each tea. And when they had to even drag Eeyore to the dentist because of such a horrible pain he had in his mouth. So they also had to look at the mirror, you know, by themselves, you know, and find out that, fuck, you know, all my teeth are so rotten, you know. And no, yeah, yeah, this kind of, you know, like certain, you know, appreciation of your own body, you know, respect your body, you know, as because you have given a nice body, so let's try to look after it, you know. So far we don't know yet. I don't have nothing about negative things about the year. Yeah. I, so I came here and I came home and just went to sleep first because I was so tired. We just drink a tea every morning, 9 o'clock or 9.30. Then after one hour breakfast for him, like porridge. Porridge is favorite, like milk porridge and just drinking. Mm -hmm. And then his lunch, lunch time he eats. He likes to make some Indian food. Mm -hmm. Before I didn't know about any food preparing. Okay. So Yanni helped me. Mm -hmm. And when the second guy came, he helped me, Nilesh. Mm -hmm. So, then he taught me to cooking and everything. Now I know the cooking things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the life goes on like this, mm -hmm. every day. Before it was so many, Yanni, like when he was alone, mm -hmm. so there were like so many. But when we got like two assistants for him, mm -hmm. then they were coming like after every second day, mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. And it was like, after this incident, it was quite difficult for me to get a job in the same place, like mm -hmm. a same job place, mm -hmm. like something, sure, sure. like assistant, yeah. like yeah. personal assistant. So. Yeah. Because after happening this, like I went for one interview and they said, oh, now you have these kinds of problem. I, I have been, but I'm not a suspect for this, but still I have been to this. So they will not hire me for these jobs. Mm -hmm. I still like, I tried because I'm not involved in this. So why should I worry about this? Right. Yeah. So I send the email and everything. But now I'm at work. Good. Yeah, good. Actually, I was planning to go like, because when we were living with Mumble, we had like apartment because we were sharing in the same apartment. But after happening this, they take me to prison. Oh, wow. And when like after 17 days, when they left me from there, I had no apartment, no job. No money, nothing here. But US friend was here, mm -hmm. like Yani, Leo uncle, everything. I had to live with Yani, sometime with Leo uncle. Yeah. They got like almost one month mm -hmm. or half a month I was there. 
and i was also thinking like i was almost plan to go to back to india so what what to do now here mm-hmm. i don't have finnish language because whenever i call to any company for the job they said do you speak finnish i said little bit I said no not little bit you should speak fluently mm-hmm. I said okay and i was called to my mon- mother she said okay you can come back but then i thought like okay no i don't want to go i will stay here i will learn finnish language then i will work here so i'm wow. here <laughs> then i had like another opportunity of athletics mm. and like running because i was doing in india also mm-hmm. but uh, yeah then i got the athletics uh, club mm-hmm. in finland mm-hmm. in helsinki so i started my career there mm-hmm. so i've been there already for 4 6 years now 5 years Oh, six years. Sorry, six, yeah. <laughs> I should have done sixteen already. <laughs> I am going so quickly. And like, <clears throat> because your book was like so like a famous guy. Mm-hmm. Some of my clients also knows him because I had a picture of him in my wallet. Mm-hmm. So when I open one's wallet, mm-hmm. sir, is it your book? Mm-hmm. My one of my clients' wife asked me. I said yes. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah, we know him. Like uh, he's a nice guide and everything. Mm-hmm. Said okay. So I think like if I had this picture, I have to tell tell the stories to everybody. Mm-hmm. So it's better to I had my picture at home only. Mm-hmm. It's good like because I have picture of him in my mind. Mm-hmm. But that's enough. Mm-hmm. So yeah, only some people knows the stories mm-hmm. because I don't want to tell like to everybody. because it's like scarier like incident this happen with me like mm-hmm. with bumble but in even though if i was if i am also there like i saw even though i was so like i was 19 years that time 19 years old but i this guy who came like after 10 years i don't know like I'm always thinking about him like he is the one. Mm-hmm. And the second thing was like the Friday night was like full moon. Mm-hmm. And full moon is not good for the mental mentally weak mm-hmm. people. Yeah. As like a lay uncle told me about this. Mm-hmm. Then I told him about like uh, okay this uh, the second person this person who came there this weird person like I don't I don't like him so much. Mm. Yeah. This Saturday morning, my ne- our neighbor, like who was living on the sixth floor, mm. she was, uh, she is like my Finnish mother now. Oh. She is like my Finnish mother, and I had a, we had a laundry also. Mm-hmm. After laundry, I went to shopping, so I did like all of the work in the morning, but the laundry like I had to ca- take my laundry also back from there, so she took the laundry, she kept with us. and then she then she gave me like when the when they released me from the prison we went first to monkey niami and the police called her or she called me or something like this mm. or i call yeah yeah i called her and then she gave me the laundry and she was just thinking about us only mm. because she read the story that one of the person is releasing and she knows that it was only me yeah. who will going to release from yeah. there mm. but now yeah she is my like my finish mom that's good yeah hey, after like uh, this when i released from there they took him to the mental hospital in somewhere in yarvanpa so the doctor called me from there they also interview me the same thing i said yeah it's true that he was mentally ill but it's not true it was not he was not mentally ill when he tell to police that i am the person who killed a year mm-hmm. because not a mental person will say this mm-hmm. but yeah whatever he did he is not he is not he didn't did it like from his heart right. like somebody is controlling him that i am sure and that's 
this person. I am. I think so. Mm -hmm. As per I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody knows. Like he was so changed. Like after mm -hmm. when since I came back from mm -hmm. India, he was completely changed. Like the second thing was like also he was smoking, mm -hmm. sometimes drinking. Mm -hmm. Like not drunk, but drinking like alcohol, like normal, like. But yeah, and this weather is cold. It's like. In, even the Finnish people are also getting like, like addict. Uh, like they are also behaving so strange sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, when I when I was there, I never heard about him. Like he wants to die or something like this. No, he was just happy. Drink his morning tea, listen radio, and everything. Sunday, silly dilly, food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> humble is pushing me. Yeah. yeah. Come on, yeah. you can do it. Okay, good. Actually, he was willing that I can learn the Swedish mm -hmm. because he was like a Swedish Finnish mm -hmm. and he speaks Swedish. So he was thinking that I can also learn Swedish language. But uh, Swedish is quite similar to English also. So I can learn that easily, but Finnish is the in Finland you must speak Finnish mm -hmm. yeah. because if 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 you are speaking Swedish here by living in Finland, it's not useful mm -hmm. because not so many Finnish people also don't know the Swedish language. Mm -hmm. It's better to speak Finnish. Mm -hmm. I know the words like some words and numbers. I was making push-ups mm -hmm. exercise at home mm -hmm. when I was alone with Bumble before the Nilesh came. I was like making push-ups, like he was counting in like Finnish, English, and in Swedish, three like different languages. So there, from that I got some words and ideas like numericals. Mm, good story. He's a nice man. Yeah. He's a fine. He's not even like giving like so hard work for us. Like, yeah. but he was just saying like, okay, don't work so much. Because we are mostly in the kitchen, like doing something for him. Come on, let's come back out and just enjoy, like talking. He likes to speak so much. Mm -hmm. So he just feels like, okay, talk, talk, talk. Mm -hmm. And when he's tired, then he's going to down and he's thinking, Kela, Kela. He's doing Kela. It takes him like two, three hours for Kela. <laughs> But he likes to listen mm -hmm. and uh, talking, mm -hmm. then to reading. <laughs> Whenever it was somebody was coming for interviewing him, mm -hmm. he was like the the day before. He was always like maybe five six hour with in the kela mode. Mm -hmm. He was just thinking because he have to plan for the like mm -hmm. what's he have to talk because he have to talk so much mm -hmm. in the interview. Mm -hmm. So. And when there was an interview, we have to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Our phones, everything should be quiet. No sound. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to go through that again, you know? Huh? So for you, I'm going okay. to talk about it again. Yeah. Again, you know? <laughs> yeah, these stories are always with me. Like, it will never go. Yeah. It will never disappear. Because mm -hmm. this incident, like, even in India, my mom always goes, she heard this story, but still she is asking like, because like, I'm the only son of her. Like, she had like, she is so worried. Yeah. And the life changes changes a lot. Before I like when I was with Bumble, I didn't know anything about Helsinki. Only the same area. Yeah. And only our like the Indian shops, as you are buying the Indian spices. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. I didn't know. But now I know all the routes mm -hmm. <laughs> because I have to travel by bus to go for my work, mm -hmm. and I have like different places. So mm -hmm. sometimes it was opposite, but mm -hmm. I didn't took so deeply because mm -hmm. I'm not so religious. <laughs> okay. I just follow them because mm -hmm. it's like from their following, but I'm not so like so deeply mm -hmm. in that. 
the person who was here before working with Bumble, he is also from Goa, mm -hmm. like Gaurish. Mm -hmm. And he was always going to India back after getting his salary. He is not even informing and he is just taking his money, luggage and say bye bye to Bumble and mm -hmm. just going. After every one month, mm -hmm. he just went like two times before I came. Then he came for third time and he came again back to India. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised. I said, why you came here that I should be there with you now? I said, I'm not li I don't like there. Because he was so happy that, oh, there is a thousand euros for him. Mm -hmm. That's enough for him in India. It's quite much, mm -hmm. 60,000 rupees. But for how long? <laughs> Now he was also still asking for me, like, is there still job? When I when there was a Bumble, I said no. Now you did almost for three nights, three times, mm -hmm. and Bumble is so angry on you. Like, at least there is something like you should inform and everything. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there should be like emergency that you have to go. I have to traveling again and again mm -hmm. without informing. Mm -hmm. Then they didn't give him the chance. There was this guy called Erkki Pirtola, mm -hmm. this uh, artist, and um, he got into this saga and he was this guy who always had a video camera with him. Mm -hmm. When he was walking, it was always on, mm -hmm. so he has maybe thousands of hours, just the crown, because mm -hmm. he didn't even film, it was just on all the time. And when he came here and when he saw here, he was always filming. Mm -hmm. And so he made this little booklet called the uh, Ear Bokin Suri Saga. Mm -hmm. Ear Box, uh, like a big, uh, big saga. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I, I saw. I read it and I was a little bit before already interested about the uh, shamanism and, uh, you know, old cultures and mythology. And so this really hit because it was about our culture. Mm -hmm. But first time we came here with Juha and Io was not there. But there was all the other guys mm -hmm. sitting in Akampesa in the house and in the dark room with the candles and telling the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave him a, actually a phone call. I was looking from a, from a telephone calen, telephone booklet. Mm -hmm. So the name of your book, it was there. I think it was it was the autumn 1991 or 1992 I was calling him and he was directing us okay if you want to know more more about this uh, Lenin Cannon Temple and uh, Bok family saga go there go to Sipo and there's some guys there at Akampesa mm -hmm. so we took uh, Petri has his Suzuki blue car <laughs> I think it was <laughs> and we drive there to this place and sat for the first time we, we had this living presentation of, of the Bok Saga and all this paradise time and Alpland East time and, and uh, what about this Lemminkainen temple. And next year, next year we met Ior mm -hmm. when, he, when he came back from Goa. Mm -hmm. When you hear some like uh, person mm -hmm. or almanacca or mm -hmm. this kind of words like and then you get explanation mm -hmm. never anybody could explain anything before mm -hmm. and then there's this guy who who has this explanation which completely makes sense mm -hmm. people and then you yeah people you, you go around the world and you you see the same words mm -hmm. and then even after finding out that there is really this like places in in Finland mm -hmm. where there is uh, some of the golden box or some of mm -hmm. the the crown of the king and mm -hmm. and of course the temple and everything so and that it's really possible that one day if we find something mm -hmm. then it clears all the the the, the saga Now it's just a story. 
of course there is like evidence in the in the alphabet there is uh, all these yeah. words but not not really physical right so of course everyone understand that it's very important to find something yeah. and this is what we're doing difficult that the saga is so huge yeah. that it it blows up your brain yes and so this way it's difficult to go in because you like you have to change your whole life view yeah. the whole view about history and mythology yes We came, I think it was 91, because there was the Christina party and there, there was... They didn't... It was before the before the police... Uh, the prison story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because the Christina party was still going strong. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah, I'm he was amazing. He walks back backwards. Like he said that he made maybe world record in a back backward walking <laughs> really? yeah, <laughs> because he talks he, he talks to the audience, group yes, yeah. audience and, but he walks backwards and and very quick like he goes like this then he tells one story then he, he's gone and it's like everyone's where is he or goes there <laughs> <laughs> like, run, run after <laughs> here <run>. is <laughs> <Yours> moving <laughs> it's so quick There was uh, this interesting thing when Eeyore said that the, he learned this saga from, from his yeah. kind of mom and sister. And whenever somebody knocked the door or ring the bell, they stopped in that like second. Everything stopped and they, they were waiting like, okay, who is coming in? And they started the, like normal people to talk with this who came in. So this was going on for, for the last, for the last day. You know, when somebody ring the bell or knock the door, everybody went quiet. Mm -hmm. And then the, everyone is waiting, and who is coming? And it's like, hey, okay. And then the story starts to go on. Mm -hmm. It was so clear that, you know, this could never happen if it wouldn't come from deep inside. This sensation of like, stop, right now, because it's a secret story nobody can hear it and it happened every time if somebody knocked the door ring the bell it's like quiet and he stuck right there mm. there was like okay who are you and what is your last name and he always asked first what is your last name really? and then you told your last name and he started to analyze the last name uh -huh. <laughs> 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 kind of What's your family or clan or yeah, yeah. where you come from? Yeah, 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 sure. The time where they had to sell, sell this um, rock, the temple. I was actually in New York City that time and you how you how went to <laughs> I went there with my friend yeah. Timo Lehtinen who actually he published the book of uh, Eor Box Saga. We collect, collected the stories and, and uh, write the base, base story there about Eeyore's background and, and his message about the saga and mythology. And we went there to the auction mm -hmm. and happened to have exactly that amount of money what was needed was to buy it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the money was in cash in a shoebox. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. And it, this was in a... In a biggest newspaper in Finland is Helsingin Sanomat. They say that Juha Javanen has 60,000 in a shoebox. <laughs> yeah, well actually it was me and Petri together <laughs> at the yoga shala. We, we checked how much in the yoga school office we had the money there. Yeah. Okay. okay, we can take this much out. <laughs> yeah. And agreed, okay, we try to buy with this yeah. the mountain. And it was exactly the amount. <clears throat> in the shoebox. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. And they even say that the on one side of the shoebox side yoga payments. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> the rock is there. And and that's why it's the only place where we can really yeah. 
do things. Do things because it's uh, the one is the church is all in one place and one is the museo virasto museo museo office. His uh, things would have been passed to 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 Lisa. Yeah, if they, get, they didn't get stolen, uh, that because the, the Sakampersa got stolen many times. When you went yeah. to India, would maybe four or five times people went in and stole, you know, paintings, all these old things. Yeah, it's, it's what very we saw in, in, in summer cottages to, to, to get Robert. What we saw in '91, what we saw in '91, they few days, few years later, there was yeah, everything half was of the stuff, furniture, yeah. photos. Yeah. Paintings, yeah. mm. all gone. All gone. And even I, I heard Eeyore's little storehouse in the city. It was also Robert. Wow. He had some family family stuff there mm -hmm. stored mm -hmm. in this block of flats. There. Also things gone from there. But yeah, somebody still has those stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread all around. Yeah. One little detail came to my mind, not many people know about, but I think somehow he he felt his memory and mind, even if it was amazing, was also somehow fragile. Because he said that he had been writing down certain names and years to make sure that he, he won't lose them. Mm -hmm. For example, about some some of his family line from 1250 on, mm -hmm. the names, mm -hmm. some names and uh, and the uh, years. He said he has been writing down somewhere, but we never actually found out this family line. Maybe he meant from 1250. There's some writing uh, he's been writing ab about the the this. This Viapori, the when he was the guide, mm -hmm. he's been writing those names and making uh, made some drawings. Those we have, and there is also this uh, Dagmar and this uh, Russian Tsar in in Finland. Those names we have also written down. In no, fact, you know, you this is this is the thing you don't maybe believe the whole saga, but there's the fact that this family is there and existed and what they did yeah. so that you can find from the books yeah. the funny thing is that you know because usually when you make research about like this area yeah. you cannot link to other area because you think like there's a book about this Sipo where we are now yeah. then there's a book about Helsinki and they talk about Bok here and Bok here but they don't, they don't have any connection between these two. Mm. Like we have this place called Pukinmaki. This is like a bog hill. Mm. And then then we have this bog house in the middle of the Helsinki. And they, they cannot make connection between Pukinmaki <laughs> and a bog house. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a crazy thing. There's so many bogs and these places which is called bog. Yeah. Or Pukki. Yeah. But sometimes it's written like B O X box. It's a no. It's not box. Yeah. B O C K. Right. Yeah, it can be B O X. It can be B O C K, and then it can be in Finnish Pukki. But they all has the same origin. Mm. But the people who make this research, they, there's no connection between this, like all different box and Pukki and this. And it, in a box saga, you see the connection. You see the the kings. Uh, uh, the the road from Sweden to to Russia, yeah, and all these book killer places and all these uh, mansions and everything. It's it's very clear. Yeah, yeah. Because he said that this uh, this yes uh, or grow or houses you 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 take rest when you are traveling a long long distance yes. in old times yes. with the horse. Yes. Yes. You had to change the horses. Yes. So these places. We are very often, often uh, run by these Bok families. Yeah. So it was kind of their uh, their work or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
tavernas. I interviewed him the last year of his life and I we decided that he tell the story and I, I write the book. Mm -hmm. Like you had it ten years earlier. Mm -hmm. A little bit more actually. And um, we went through like few months and interviewing and then there was a everything went well but I'm not smoking so I did never had any smoke with me any weed mm -hmm. and um, so then he said like we need third person <laughs> 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 and he knew that there is this one guy who has the the flower mm -hmm. who who crow like a home crow weed and uh, the flower and, and like the best best stuff and uh, so then we, we took this third person and he was very happy in one recording he th talks about this how how important it is that he gets some smoke and then you know enter to this different space and start to start to tell the story and the, uh, for the thinking process yeah. not so much for the talking process but for the thinking process to move deeper and, and get some uh, details I think for the story and this is maybe with what he started to lose in the in the end like our plan was to go through the saga mm -hmm. go through his personal life mm -hmm. and uh, 18th century mm -hmm. the history of 18th century so the Suomenlinna story in the end he didn't want to do Suomelina story because he said he cannot remember everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he started to lose the names and, and numbers mm -hmm. and he said that this is this is history this is not saga mm -hmm. so he has to he has to know the numbers mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all right because you can't just say history and tell wrong numbers mm -hmm. anybody could say that okay now you're <laughs> doesn't know what he talks about but yeah, we, well, of course, what happened, we, we couldn't finish all the interviews, but, but I've been still trying to write the book mm -hmm. for five, six years now. There's uh, two very interesting recordings from 1984, the same year that Dior came out from his box to say that ah I have this old story from my family and in one recording he is telling about this his his memory system mm -hmm. how he is using the mind mm -hmm. so how to store things there like if I say that small boxes he has there in his mind yeah he said that uh, when there was coming people to to listen his uh, his stories at Suomenlinna. Usually there he asked that if if people have old letters mm -hmm. related to, to Suomenlinna, to to make copies of them or to send them to Ior, mm -hmm. so that his mother could rewrite those letters, mm -hmm. copy. kind of copy, and then they will were burning the copies they got. So a little bit interesting thing. Hmm. They made they made handwriting copies or then typewriting, mm -hmm. and the original letters, or actually the copies of the original letters, they would destroy. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes there was some maybe sensitive information about people. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to also to collect historical things. Mm -hmm not any scandals mm -hmm. or things like that that mm -hmm. would create some maybe some from rumors about some families so this kind of respect of the old families mm -hmm. was also an important thing mm -hmm. and also the saga was changing like i i've been interviewing quite many people and they said like that somebody brought out some kind of fact about some some historical thing and then he just changed the story like this Okay, it wasn't like this, it was like that. <laughs> mm -hmm.
because this analyzing, like analyzing the word, like you have said, it was a game, it was this play. And it was very important him for like when you analyze something like this, it's not the truth. It's, it's just analyzing it. It's a game. Mm -hmm. But then somebody brought in some true fact about this, this word or something. And he's like, okay, let's take this. And mm -hmm. he took it into the story. So there was many times the, the story was changing also. Mm -hmm. Even some uh, alphabets like uh, D, dog, D, D. In the beginning, in the beginning, D was dog, day. Mm -hmm. In the end, D was D was like drinking, mm. drinking uh, sap, mm -hmm. uh, leather. So even this kind of big things were changing. Even the uh, the the number of the al alphabets, because before the alphabet start from E, mm -hmm. so it was E A B C D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the in the end, there was no E R B C. The E was E was not in the beginning, because there was this E uh, E, uh, and this E uh, E uh was not original. This other E uh came later, mm -hmm. and it added the number of the alphabets. So he took the E out from the beginning, mm -hmm. because one number was added in the end. <laughs> okay. Because this E uh, E. Uh I think that's what Jim Curry was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was there was little changes where it were like mm -hmm. quite big in the end. If you think about like how you can change the number if it's uh, in the in the tradition or mm -hmm. in the mythology. So these things like D, dark or D D, and this E and E uh, E uh, happened uh, when I think there was some more information came in. Mm -hmm and from I from outside mm. it didn't come from him it came from outside mm -hmm. but even in 1993 4 when we went when he was teaching this sound system mm -hmm. it was very clear that it was e mm -hmm. aserlaspori and so on mm -hmm. so and all was there was e and then because otherwise this ramsa didn't go on it needed at top mm -hmm. this E sound mm -hmm. to make it flow around and around and around again. It started from E and finished with E. e. Right. But in the end, it looked like the E disappeared. That's strange. Yeah. I didn't know about this. Mm. Like now, uh, he he thought this alphabet, uh, this Abi, one of this, uh, who was helping him, this Indian. Mm -hmm. He doesn't start from E. He start from A, 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 Sar, B, Bori. Yes, but okay. It seems there's two de two methods of this mm. alphabet because he always started telling the alphabet from A. Yeah. A, A, Ser, B, Bori, Che, Shara, D, D, Da, E, 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 F, R. But he ended with E sound. E was at the end again. Yeah. But always he started from A. At From that time when I, uh, I was mm. learning, it, always it started from A. A, A, Ser. Mm -hmm. But when it went round, then it was E, Asenaspori, C, D. Yeah, in that Ramsa. In that Ramsa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that Ramsa. In 1984, when he did the first recordings of of the of the saga with uh, with uh, official people who came from uh, cultural centers. Mm -hmm from uh, from Finnish center and then from Finnish Swedish center they made uh, long interviews mm -hmm. with Eeyore and and also stored mm -hmm. in their in their files mm -hmm. these recordings mm -hmm. so there Eeyore I think he was telling that in he learned very many Ramsas in in root language mm -hmm. small sentences mm -hmm. kind of 
mantras, mm -hmm. but in, in root language. And he said, but I think I will never actually teach those Ramsas to anybody. It was a little bit in interesting information that time. Maybe he, he, he told some of them, maybe to Michelle and Jim, mm -hmm. but usually when he was telling the stories, he was more talking about the sounds and, and, uh, and the words related to those sounds, but not going through the, let's say, old Ramsas. Mm -hmm. One day before he was murdered, yeah. he, he told to this Abi, this one guy, <coughs> that, you know, do you have a recorder? I, I, have to, I, I have to tell this thing. Abi said, yeah, I have my phone. And he said, Let, let's record. And I, so Abi put the recorder on and starts to record. He start to talk. In the end, Abi looked the phone. The recorder was not on. And he didn't get it. Mm. But and this was this was strange thing. Where the, this was one day before, mm. so Saturday he was murdered. This was on Friday. Mm. So almost like he knew that it will happen. Maybe there was that kind of energy in the air. Mm. Of course, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, sense yeah. something. Something strange. Something is, is going on, and maybe it's better to release something. Yeah, it was interesting because he he kind of wanted to die, because that was also part of the saga. Is that when you cannot walk, you mm. you jump from that rock, from this Ette stupa. But at the same time, he was. When I saw him. In the end, he was very happy also, because he kind of released the saga. He was he was free. He was at home, he had two Indian guys helping him. He was also quite happy that he, he was still there and like by himself. Like many people said, it became quite negative in the end because he was sick and he, he was alone. But what I saw, he was very happy. He was like, almost like what, I, what we call enlightenment. He was just like free. Which I could understand. His, de his destiny was uh, fulfilled somehow. Yeah. He was just lying down and r listening to Swedish radio stations. The Finnish Swedish radio station. <laughs> 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 and he had some favorites, uh, this, some guys, and he was just listening and he was very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was very happy with a simple life. Mm -hmm. But also, he needed people around. It was very important to have some people. Sure. And uh, there was a certain time in his life when not so many people came to visit him. And that time he was really sad. Mm -hmm. Because he felt that uh, somehow he didn't have this connection with, with people so much. At least he was complaining. But otherwise, I also saw that, well, quite many people came also that time. Maybe it was kind but of... But there was less people who, who brought the smoke. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. That's the point, I think. <laughs> he said, nobody has been coming. But like many people came, but it was mostly like Leo and, <laughs> and me, maybe. <laughs> and me. Nobody smokes. <laughs> Very bad life. Yeah. Of course, we have a, one thing what is also true that there was lots of negative happening. People don't want to talk so much about it. Mm -hmm. But there was lots of negative happening and, and many people, that's why it becomes like a black magic or like this kind of negative for many people. And, and especially through the, through the social, like the newspapers and different articles about him. People were not really like Try to find out who is your book and where he came from. They just made up the stories about the weed smoking and what sperm sperm drinking and like they all turn it very negative. But the truth is that 
there was lots of negative also happened like people commit suicides and and people freaking out uh, only smoking but not eating in like days just having some like uh, like psychosis or something like this uh, so yeah. this this also happens so the whole story like there is this amazing story but there is so much was going on at the same time and 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 then the newspapers writing all this negative so it was a little bit like dangerous like we say it was not so easy to get in because there was also this side mm -hmm. that there was negative things happening not many people want to talk about it mm -hmm. but you know people who want to tell the story they maybe doesn't want to tell yeah. the neg negative side also negative side of Eeyore because there was usually when you when you have so much light there is also so much darkness sometimes the darkness came out and there's some people who who want to talk about this darkness but they are not very popular in there <laughs> but mostly you saw the positive side but sometimes it came out it's like a, it's a weird energy you know um, I understand it the weird energy is kind of emotional emotional burst sure. for example I once met this kind of emotional energetic burst with Eeyore no violence but it was the kind of he could mm -hmm. have this kind of quite a negative moment. Sure. Usually he was kind of this saga is completely positive and everything is good. We are not talking about gods, we are talking about good people doing good things for mm -hmm. for people. It's not about the wars or any heroes, war heroes. Even if there's some weapons mentioned, they are more like symbols for mm -hmm kind of certain certain level of respect or this kind of thing. yeah mostly follow symbols the the weapons mm -hmm. and but bu also bullets and yeah so it, it was too like you said it would be much easier to get it from the woman to the woman not mm -hmm. from me or to the woman mm -hmm. it would be completely different story I saw the in a temple in in India. I saw this like uh, elephant having having sex with a woman. And I'm like, look at that! Like, what a different time! Yeah. And it's in a temple, so like that the higher caste people can see it. Yeah. What a time! <laughs> yeah. Like this kind of pictures, you know, showing in the in a temple, and people having like these orgies. Uh, there's horses and there's elephants and there's monkeys and and this is normal and now we're talking like nowadays people watch all this porn from the video the youtube and all or what is the yeah. all this uh, internet but people cannot talk anything about this kind of right. if you if you mention sperm drinking like people like oh, yeah. you crazy yeah. and what people <laughs> Or somebody's naked, or the, or the child is naked, running somewhere, like two year old, and people are like freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's so strange. <laughs> it's so strange. But it, it must be some. There is some kind of like. It's the same as like the now the people are homophobic, so yeah. when when there is this kind of phobia, there must be some kind of memory inside, which makes you so scared. It must be. How you could be so scared about like gay people or, or lesbian people? It's like, what's what's a big deal? But there must be some kind of memory that it makes you so close to that yeah. that you freak out. 
Well, this is also like we talk about overpopulation and all like there was no op overpopulation because you could control yep. who made the children and how they made the children. Yep. They made children more if they need more and they did less if they need less. It was very easy control. Love and where is the heart? Yeah, the heart. But at the same time, uh, I think, of course, we have emotions, you know, like the this kind of, you know, the love is love, you know, the, the heart is where it is. But, the, but of course, you also have love emotion. And that's maybe I think sometimes people forget in this saga story that of course we have this attention, uh, attraction, love emotion. Like when you, it's not just a mechanic thing that you right. you fuck somebody from behind like a dog. Right. There must be emotion. Yeah. Eeyore didn't talk so much about this emotion, and I think it's a little bit missing. Yeah, and. Um, almost feels like Eeyore was missing some of that part in his I life. I think so too, man. I really wonder about the balance in that. And uh, uh, this, is is this. this is what not people talk so much about. That When I interviewed Eeyore and all this, I had a feeling that he was missing a lot, this love emotion. Yeah. It's understandable because this story had to be kept secret so long time yeah and also in Finland mm -hmm. people were not so comfortable to show their emotions even mm -hmm. today you can see that Finnish people are very Reserve. very calm and and Reserve. you feel like little distant takes yeah. time you get into connection with them and make friends and then you start to feel kind of warmth of course and to disconnectedness but otherwise this uh, Finnish culture is very it's not so emotional open so if you have a secret in your family you are you are going to keep secret you have to keep your emotions secret only showing inside the house within the family but otherwise you are very cool full person going around so in this way you can we can understand that when the story came out it was missing this emotional side yeah yeah even 500 years ago oh yeah man there was this uh, this campaign about uh, against witchcraft yeah. all over europe all over but, but also in finland if you drink yeah, yeah. For Upko, you get killed. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There was many, many cases recorded in uh, in, in in this the court in, uh, in the Middle Ages in Finland. There was this uh, fight against paganism. Yeah. Yeah. They were killing many people. Absolutely. That's why it was really important to keep secret all those Absolutely. stories. Absolutely. Which Otherwise, your neighbor oh, yeah. could sue, sue you yeah. at the court. Yeah. There is this interesting story about the, the priest, um, this responsibility to, to teach the... Actually, it was the father's and mother's responsibility to teach the how to masturbate and all these things. Mm -hmm. But later, it, it was a priest there. Uh, responsibility mm -hmm. so to teach, teach this uh, sexuality and uh, masturbation and you know it's still happening mm -hmm. but nowadays the wrong way a little bit the wrong <laughs> way it became like dirty and uh, mm -hmm. they started to use you know like really like abusing yeah but before it was a uh, sexual education mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't always happen in a in a good ways. Who knows? But uh, but this like very very old tradition that uh, what happens in now in a, especially in the Catholic uh, mm -hmm. Christianity. The, but uh, 
you always say that the, now the priest has a difficult times because what used to be the sexual education now it's child abusing mm -hmm. and what they were teaching before was maybe different what they yeah, what they be doing now different. Yeah, I, I, yeah yeah it became this like uh, well it makes sense to me I mean it's but anyway not so far uh, still the same but the if you show for the boy like how to masturbate nowadays it's, uh, it's a child abusing uh, even if you don't even touch the boy yeah, yeah, yeah. and like uh, how you show it you show how t how you how you do it by yourself yeah and then the boy is watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, if the priest goes to show how to yeah, how yeah, to yeah. master <laughs> bed, and the boy is watching, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's years uh, like now the priest has a difficult difficult work. <laughs> <laughs> but these things you start to understand through this saga, you know, all these yeah. these things about the also like when this boy stayed with the woman for seven years they got all this feminine energy and right. they they even yeah. used the, the the girls clothes yeah now if that's the nature of us yeah we can we can say that's maybe more the nature so now we don't get it yeah. you know the boys start to use the boys clothes they start to you know hang out with the fathers too early mm -hmm. they don't get get this mother energy and then they, when they're 40, they want to use women's clothes, maybe, and, mm -hmm. and because they're missing the, sure. the femininity in, a, yeah. in their life. So y you always like, so many times when you see like people have problems and then you, you see the origin from the saga. Right. Okay, this is, we are missing this. So R sound ah. is R. A R. A is feminine. R is masculine. When they say Ra Rusar or Grisar is one of this uh, root Ramsa. So then Ra is referring to the king as uh, as uh, head of the court. What is right and what is wrong. Rusar means give merit if you did good things. Risa, Risar means if you did bad thing, you get punished. And the king was ours and, and the queen was my. And they say ours my estate. Yes, ours my estate. Yeah, I like. We were driving here. Petri mentioned this, the story of this place where is this uh, temple, temple mountain. Yeah. So when this Svetlin family, they bought yeah. this uh, this place. First, they bought this uh, area, which is very close, which is next to the shore, where the house was. Mm -hmm. So they was they they wanted a place for a summer house, summer cottage. Mm -hmm. And a year or two after, they bought this area on top of it, where is this uh, the mountain. Mm -hmm. So they are not the same property. They were different property, bought in different time. Mm -hmm. From there, you can you can actually see that they had a special wish or purpose to buy also the po top top of the mountain. So who who time. wants to buy? It? piece of rock mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere no you understand you get this nice piece of land with uh, some beach yeah. and you have the sea and everything but then you buy separate rock where you cannot build anything mm. it is very interesting you know if you think about this story and what is the true and what is not true and all but this thing like why somebody buys a piece of rock and now it's even separated there's two two different parts in that rock mm. so this is one one piece of land and other piece of land and they bought the two yeah they didn't just buy one piece of rock they they bought the whole rock yeah 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 there's some reason 
because yeah. it looks like that one part of it is where is this the burning place yeah that's the bigger part then little smaller part is maybe the place where is this etestupa yeah say so all they do of course belong to the same bigger thing but as a property they were separate mm -hmm. that's why they they bought both of them yeah yeah fascinating and also happened that we we got both yeah because they were sold in an auction separately so all the three properties were sold separately uh -huh. and we could get the two of them meaning the temple mountain yeah 